In today's video, I'm gonna list the best Toronto condo buildings in City Place Toronto in downtown Toronto. As you may know from working with me and from this channel, I'm not the biggest fan of City Place. In fact, I think most City Place condos range from subpar at best to really awful, awful buildings. But I often get asked about City Place condos and I often get asked to list some of the better buildings within City Place. So I thought why not oblige and tell you from my professional experience working within the downtown Toronto condo market, what what are some buildings within City Place Toronto that are probably the cream of the crop for City Place standards? Before we get into it, hello everyone. This is Sam from Sibiri 6 Real Estate, back with another video for you guys here today. If you are new to the channel, welcome on this channel. We like to discuss everything having to do with the Toronto and GTA real estate market. These types of videos, market stats, market report, buyer advice, seller advice, area analysis, building reviews, property tours, Toronto real estate vlogs, and just so much more. So if you find any of this content enjoyable, but more importantly, informative, just give me a subscription, follow for more, and you know what to do for any buying we're selling inquiries, you can now get in touch with me with my link in the description. I'd be happy to assist you in your buying or selling inquiries. Anyways, I have to make something very clear. I'm gonna name my favorite city place condos within downtown Toronto, and you have to really understand that I'm rating these buildings on a curve. So for city place standards, the buildings I'm going to name are good. But if you are insistent on living in a city place or you have no choice but to find a place in city place, these are the buildings I would recommend above all the other condo buildings in City Place. Lukewarm as it may be, nonetheless, let's start with my recommendations for City Place condos. Starting out, probably the best Toronto condo building within City Place, Concord really showed that they have taken the feedback from the previous projects within City Place into account and have incorporated a lot of solutions in the execution of this building is 80 Queens Wharf and 85 Queens Wharf. Execution of this building is 80 Queens Wharf and 85 Queens Wharf. Worth. This is actually one of the few city place condos that I've purchased a unit in on the behalf of my client. There's another building that I'm going to discuss that I think is also really good as well. But yes, 80 Queens Wharf and 85 Queens Wharf probably, I would say, if not the best city place condos by far, definitely, definitely one of the ones I would recommend and one of the only ones I would recommend within city place Toronto. Of course, there's always downsides, right? No building is perfect, especially the city place condos. Here, unit sizes can be a little bit miniature. And from my understanding, the cost of utilities are a little bit on the higher end, but it's a really well-managed building. And I've rarely had any issues with the elevator wait time. Next city place condo that I would like to discuss as one of the ones I would uh, recommend, but one of the few ones. You have to understand city place is about I think 15 to 20 towers. So I'm only naming a few here for a reason, and it is 11 Brunel Court. Now, once again, 11 Brunel Court is not a perfect building. Every single condo within the Toronto real estate market and GTA real estate market has some faults. If you're after a perfect building, you're never gonna find any building to buy in. But 11 Brunel Court for city place standards is actually quite a decent building. It is a bit older than 80 Queens Wharf that we just discussed, and it's a little bit even heavier on the amenities, but they've done some recent renovations to really uh, spice up the building. Location is quite, quite convenient. There's no question about that. And one of the good qualities about this building is that the layouts are actually quite functional. Um, I'm not even going to say by city place standards, really for, you know, Toronto condo uh, standards, especially in downtown Toronto, the layouts here are pretty functional, at least for the one plus ones I've seen in the two bedrooms, right? Uh, a one plus one in this building is probably way better than I would probably have to say, you know, uh, Dan Leckie or any of the ice boat buildings. Just think of any other city place condo that I haven't mentioned. And you know, these layouts are probably a bit more functional in Brunel. 10 Navy Wharf, 381 Front. And really the numbers reflect the quality uh, of 11 Brunel and you know, the previously mentioned one as well, 80 and 85 Queens Wharf. The prices kind of reflect the fact that these are actually the best Toronto condos in city place because they're the priciest condos within the city place. That's right, when we take a look at the previously mentioned one, 80 Queens Wharf and now 11 Brunel, they rank at least within the last, I will ha probably have to say 150 to 300 days, they rank as the first most expensive per square foot and second most expensive per square foot. 11 Brunel coming in number two. Now on the downside, 11 Brunel is a little bit more traffic than 80 Queens Wharf and 85 Queens Wharf. 
uh, the foot traffic is a little bit more. As a result, elevator wait times will be a little bit more, especially during rush hour. But if you have to buy them within City Place, 11 Burner was one of those buildings I would recommend. Now, after these two, 80 Queensworth and 11 Burner would kind of take a dip in quality. The next two I'm about to name are probably ones that are barely making the list of City Place condos I would recommend, but are still sufficient enough for me to name them. And you know, if it's the right fit, really nine out of 10 items on your criteria, it fits that nine out of 10 items, then only then will I recommend this to a buyer of mine. Let's start. Let's start with 75 uh, Queensworth. Now 75 Queensworth, nowhere near as good as 80, I think, or 85. But the thing about 75 Queensworth is that it does have pretty good views, floor to ceiling windows. And really, frankly, in my professional opinion, at least something, you know, it's better than the remainder of City Place by far. So, you know, it's affordable. It has pretty good floor plans in terms of the one plus ones. Once again, ones not as good as 11 Brunel, but the junior one bedrooms in this building are pretty good, I would say, in terms of floor plan. Um, and it's better than the rest of the uh, options in City Place. There are faults with it. The, the concierge, I'm never impressed with the concierge there. And the elevator wait times can be an issue. The configuration is really confusing where, if I recall correctly, the, the, I I think the lobby is technically P1 or or G is technically P1. Some some weird configuration such as that one, uh, and uh, you know it's quite trafficked, I would say. But there's no doubt about it. It has some fantastic views and it's affordable options for a lot of people looking to get involved in the market. And it's a really good transitory option, one to two years. Uh, and for rentals, it's pretty good as well. And then lastly, 4K Spadina, 4,000 Spadina. This one as well as another building I would recommend within City Place. Once again, not as much as the first two I listed, but it's far better than the alternatives within City Place. At least in my professional opinion, 4,000 Spadina is another decent building in City Place and one of the few rare ones I would recommend. For, for City Place standards, it has an okay maintenance per square foot price. And I believe it has direct access to the grocery store, which uh, as of two years ago was Sobeys. I don't know if it's still Sobeys, but it has direct underground parking access to that. The elevator wait times in this building are actually quite decent. The amenities are quite nice as well. But on the downside, some issues you can expect are uh, sound cancellation. Noise does travel in between units, especially noise does travel a lot from the hallways to the units. So in this building, if you're near the elevators, it's gonna be even a bigger issue. And really there's a dire lack of visitor parking in this building. Uh, it's mostly paid parking and in the past I have heard accounts of price hiking for the paid parking. Anyways, as you saw, these are the buildings I would recommend within City Place. All, if you work with me, if you've purchased with me in City Place, you know I have always prefaced that I'm not the biggest fan, but if you are going to go with the City Place condo, these four buildings I just listed are probably the only ones I would recommend. At the time of recording of this video, if I, you know, the other buildings can make significant improvements in the future and turn things around in terms of management, in terms of funds, in terms of tackling some of the Airbnb issues or the other common problems that plague other City Place condos. But with regards to at this point, point in time, these are the City Place condos I would recommend, and they make the list of best condo buildings within City Place. If you enjoyed this video, follow and subscribe for more. My contact information in the description box for any buying or selling inquiries. Do not be shy. Do not hesitate to get in touch. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe and stay tuned. Thank you.